Cycling clothing can be an interesting landscape to navigate. There's so many brands, there's so many garments, there's so many things that you need to know. And so I thought as part of this week's video, I'd put together a comprehensive clothing guide and tell you guys exactly what items you need to get you through the hottest seasons and the coldest seasons. First things first, I'm sponsored by Velocio. So all of my clothing is from the Velocio range. The clothing is amazing, super high quality, and a whole lot of their garments are made from recycled fabrics. The clothing is expensive, but what I've learned is that more expensive clothing actually does last for longer. The materials are of a higher quality, they have better moisture wicking properties, and they just perform better. I'm still using garments that I was given four years ago because the quality is high and they still look as good today as the way that they did four years ago when I was given them. I've done thousands and thousands and thousands of kilometers on the bike. I've climbed millions of meters. I know what works and I know what doesn't work. And so at the end of this video, you guys are going to be equipped with all of the information you need to go out to your local bike shop, to your online Velocio retailer and basically buy the equipment you need and leave the stuff that you don't at the store. So let's jump into it. For the sake of this video, we're gonna break things down into two seasons. You've got the hot summer season and you've got the cold winter season. Obviously the seasons that exist around that, but today we're gonna to focus on the hot and the cold. So let's start with the hot, it's the most simple. There's essentially two or three garments that you need and nothing more. First of all, you need to get yourself a good, clean, crisp pair of white cycling socks. A pair of my own personalized Jack cycling socks, are probably the best way to go. But if you don't have access to those, there's a range of other goodies available. What you want in a good cycling sock is something that's lightweight, it's breathable, and it's not going to shrink when you put it in the wash. So a high quality fabric. Moving up the body, we've got the shorts. Now. The shorts are important because this is one of the contact points that you have on the saddle. Shorts either fit you or they don't. The chamois is either in the right place or it's not. I've tested hundreds of different shorts over the years and I can honestly say that the Velocio Luxe bib shorts are the best that are on the market, hands down. So a nice pair of shorts for the legs and then moving up the body. Some people will say that you need to wear a base layer. In summer, I actually disagree. If the temperatures are really warm, say 30, 30 plus degrees Celsius, then there's no need to wear a base layer. You're basically wearing an extra layer that isn't actually doing anything. So I just go straight on the, with a jersey. I basically just pop a jersey on the top. So a nice lightweight jersey. Uh, you can get mesh jerseys. You can get jerseys that are a slightly thicker material. You can get merino jerseys. Velocio stocks the full range and all of their garments are really good. But in terms of summer, that's really all you need. A good pair of socks, a good pair of shorts, and a good jersey. And that's it. With those three items, you're basically done. On top of that, if you want to work your way into some of those sort of cooler months, but it's not yet cool enough for a full winter kit, you can add things like arm warmers and you can add things like knee warmers. Now the benefit of these garments is that when you're on the ride, if it does get too hot, you can quite easily take them off. And on the flip side, if you've climbed a mountain, you get to the top and you need to descend again, and you know that it's gonna be cold, you can slip them back on. These are items that you can store in the back of your jersey pocket, pull them out, pop them back in whenever you need to. They're generally lightweight. They last for, you know, they last for seasons because they're not items that you use every day. So good pair of arm warmers and a good pair of knee warmers, and that will get you through that sort of shoulder season, do we wanna call it. Now, as it starts to get colder, there's a couple of items that really become essential. All right, so we're gonna run through these now. Mid-video intermission, just remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> You've got the long legs, so the long bibs, the bib tights. So the bib tights generally have a slightly thicker material and sometimes they're actually a little bit furry or thermal inside. So Velocio do a great thermal bib short or bib tight, I should say. It's been developed on the east coast of America in conditions that you know, aren't really ideal for cycling, but still, you know, men and women get out there, they brave these elements. I've used these garments in like minus four, minus six degrees Celsius, and they just work. You stay warm. So a good set of bib tights is something that you'll want to invest money in 
and that will see you for, you know, a couple of seasons at least. Moving up, this is where a base layer becomes really important because what a base layer will do is it'll wick the moisture away from your body into the outer garment, which then keeps you essentially drier, which essentially keeps you warmer. So a good merino base layer on the underside. Uh, you can get long sleeve. I don't generally use long sleeve base layers myself. Just a short sleeve base layer will do me. Uh, on top of that, a long sleeve jersey. So these conditions, we're now talking like cold conditions. You're not having to put on or take off arm warmers. You're going out in five, six degrees. So a good long sleeve jersey. Again, these come in merino varieties. They come in synthetic varieties. Do yourself a favor, spend some extra money and get one really good long sleeve jersey. You won't be disappointed. On top of the jersey, we then put something like a vest. So a vest can be good for a number of reasons. A vest can be good for visibility. So I use a nice bright red vest because you know in winter it's often dark, it's cloudy, cars find it hard to see you. And just being a little bit more visible has so many added benefits. So. A good vest will not only keep you visible, but it'll also keep that center portion of your body where all of your organs are nice and warm. A good vest is one that packs up easily. You can stow it in your back pocket. Um, you know, it's got a couple of pockets in the back so that you can stuff your rubbish when you're riding. Uh, you know, there's lots of good vests on the market. So on the topic of vests, and actually rain jackets for that matter, and we'll get onto rain jackets later, one feature that you must have in a vest is basically a double zipper. So what that means is you've got your main zipper that does up from the bottom, but an additional zipper that allows you to open up from the bottom if it gets hot. And this becomes really useful when you're climbing. You may not want to take the gilet off altogether, but you may just want to get a bit of airflow. And so you basically zip it up from the bottom. So this is all flapping in the wind. And when you do get to the top, you're not having to fumble around with that zip, trying to find it again, hands off the bars. You basically grab the zip and you pull it straight back down and you're done up again. So a double zip is a must have when it comes to the gilet and the rain jacket. In addition to a vest, the other thing you want to purchase is a good rain jacket. Now, I hear people complain that a good rain jacket is expensive and there's a reason why. The materials that are used in a good rain jacket, they're breathable, but they'll also keep you dry. So when it's raining, you won't get wet from the outside in, but at the same time, you won't basically sweat from the inside out. So it's not having that plastic bag effect. If you imagine yourself wrapped in a big bit of plastic and you go for a run around the block or you go for a ride on your bike, like you're gonna sweat because it's just not breathable. A good rain jacket is breathable. And just like the vest, I recommend going for a bright colored rain jacket because you're only gonna wear these garments when the weather is shit, when the weather is grim and when it's dark outside. So a good bright rain jacket is, you know, it's money well spent. So they're the main items that you need for your, I guess, yearly cycling calendar. There are other accessories on top of that, things like gloves, which when it does get cold are a lifesaver. So what to look for in a good set of gloves? Again, something that's breathable, something that's nice and lightweight, something that packs up small, but something that has a bit of dexterity in the finger. So if you do have to pull your phone out of the back pocket, if you do have to use a touch screen on your computer, you can still do it with the gloves on. So the one other accessory that you'll wanna buy is a good buff. Now, what's a buff? A buff is essentially like a stocking that you're gonna put over your head and you're basically gonna ride with it like this so that you can't see where you're going. Well, no, you're not. You're gonna pull it down like this. And you basically, what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep your neck warm, but when it does get cold, you can also pull it up and keep your face warm like this. Now, this is an item that costs next to nothing, but does a whole lot in terms of keeping you warm. So don't forget to get yourself a buff. The next garment in terms of accessories is shoe covers. So a shoe cover is basically like a rain jacket for your shoes, but it also acts as an additional layer when it's cold. So, you know, it's essentially a sock that goes over your shoe. There's a raft of different options out there, be that for time riding on the road, be that if you're using mountain bike cleats. For those that are on the, on the road, um, again, a great option is the Velocio, um, shoe cover, it's lightweight, it works, it keeps you warm, it's not super, super thick, uh, it's waterproof, it, it ticks all of the boxes. So there you have it. That's basically my garment guide to see you through 
summer, winter, autumn, and spring, all four seasons. I almost guarantee that if you have every item on this list, you will be warm when it's cold and comfortable when it's hot. Again, you may have to spend some additional money if you want good garments, but I hands down recommend spending the money once because a lot of these items are gonna last you for years and years and years to come and they're not gonna let you down when the conditions get ugly. So there you go, my ultimate gear list for cycling year round. I hope you've learned something there. Bush.